You've probably seen the headlines by now. Stellantis has a patent for an onboard fire suppression system for EVs, and the internet's already calling it a breakthrough. But do patents put out fires? Let's break down the system, what it actually does, and what it doesn't. You found Stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter and automotive engineer researching EV batteries since 2018. Before we get into the details on the Stellantis patent, I want to take a minute to talk about how patents actually work. And I'm going to keep it high level, because a lot of what you're seeing in the headlines, it's just wrong. I spent about 15 years of my engineering career in research and development. In a big portion of that, I was actually involved in intellectual property. I've analyzed hundreds of patents, both U.S. and international. And I'm currently listed as the inventor of around 30 of them. And trust me, that's not the flex you think it is. My previous companies, they own all the rights to all those patents. Now, here's where the headlines start to fall apart. Some are saying Stellantis just filed the patent. Others are saying it was just granted neither of those are accurate. When a company comes up with an idea, they often file a patent application as quick as possible. Sometimes it's a provisional, that's for a different video. But I call this the science fiction stage, and I'll come back to that. Once a patent is filed, it sits in the background, hidden from the public for about 18 months. That gives the company a head start to work on the details before anything becomes public. That's exactly what happened here. Stellantis filed this patent application in May of 2024, and it didn't become public until December of last year. Now, about that science fiction comment. You can patent ideas that sound great on paper, even if they're completely impractical. Some patents, they're honestly kind of wild. One of my favorites is this one I found from 1965, an apparatus designed to assist childbirth using centrifugal force. The, the figures are just, well, interesting. Baby's first carnival ride. Strap mom in, baby slides out. The point is, just because something is patented doesn't mean it works. And it doesn't mean it's safe. And it definitely doesn't mean it's going to go into production. So with that in mind, let's look at what Stellantis is actually claiming in this patent. In basic terms, they're putting a fluid-filled bladder containing a fire retardant material inside the battery pack. If sensors detect thermal runaway, an actuator uses blades to pierce not only the bladder, but also parts of the battery's thermal management system. And remember, by the time the sensors are actually detecting thermal runaway, you're already well into the failure. This isn't a preventative system. So when the system is actuated, the flame retardant material mixes with the coolant to generate a foam. Now, you're probably wondering why they're piercing a bladder and the coolant system instead of just releasing the material through some type of solenoid or valve. My guess is this patent is intentionally trying to work around other companies' intellectual property. Looking across most EV manufacturers, there are a lot of different patents out there related to battery fire suppression. I'm even the inventor on one filed back in 2022 for a fire department connection on electric vehicle batteries. Overall, most of these patents, they're not very practical. But let's focus on the Stellantis patent. The first issue is space. I've designed EV battery packs and manufacturers, they want every bit of space available for the battery cells themselves. I'm skeptical that they'd be willing to give up enough space to fit some type of fire suppression bladder. And even if they did manage to fit that bladder in the battery pack, how long is the fire suppressing chemicals, how long are they actually good for? Do they expire? Most fire suppression systems require annual inspections and maintenance, and that's not exactly easy to do when the system is buried inside the battery pack. The next issue is the design itself. The system relies on piercing both a bladder and a cooling system so everything can mix. Now, number one, I'm not convinced everything would even mix, but even if it was, would that material even be effective? Could you even get a good match between the coolant and the fire suppressant? That would take a little bit of research and development. You also have to consider conductivity. Once that material is released, there's a good chance that it's conductive, which could short bus bars and battery cells, making things potentially worse. Overall, it is an interesting concept, but there are a lot of real world challenges. And this is where I think the headlines get it wrong. This patent doesn't solve EV battery fires, and it doesn't subtly make these incidents easy to deal with for owners, manufacturers, or first responders. Patents like this are an acknowledgement that the battery fires are still a problem in this industry, and it's trying to manage them, not eliminate the battery fires. Newer battery chemistries are the key, and lithium iron phosphate, solid state, or sodium ion batteries, they don't solve the thermal runaway problem. It doesn't matter what you think, those batteries still go into thermal runaway. And until we see something survive real world testing and real world abuse, longevity, it's important to separate the good ideas on paper from the actual safety improvements in the field.